morning everyone. Good morning. We hope you are staying safe and well. Today is Valentine's Day. Yeah. We know that this is a good day for some and a difficult day for others. And so we just want you to know this morning, whether this is a good day or a challenging day, that you are loved. We want to wish you on behalf of Kingsway Church a happy Valentine's Day from all of us. We know that for some people, if you're single, this can be a tough day or it might be that you've lost someone over the last few weeks or months or, or years even. It doesn't get any easier, I'm sure, over time. But we want you to know that we are here for you. You are not alone. And we also know that actually today can be quite an exciting day for some. My dad proposed to my mum on Valentine's Day. And so we know that for some, this is a day of celebrating their marriages and their relationships. And so we want you to know that we value marriages at Kingsway Church. We think they are really important. But we know that they can be tough at times, I think, especially at this time of lockdown. Um, it's tough, isn't it, at times? And so we just want to say we are here for you and we're all in it together. Yeah, so this is our 21st Valentine's Day today, which is uh, he's going some, really. Uh, we, we only met when we were six, by the way. <laughs> yeah, if you believe that. Anyway, uh, 21st Valentine's Day. So our first Valentine's Day was at a Chinese restaurant in yeah. Birmingham when we met as students uh, back all those years ago. I don't think we'll be doing that this year, to be honest. No. Um, over the years, I've bought Deb many, many great gifts. Roses, uh, chocolates, lots of sparkly things. But this year, I've got us something special. And it's very appropriate this year. We have... It's a special package I've made, which is kind of indicative of the year. So, happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, darling. Romantic, beautiful, just what I've always wanted. That's beautiful. Oh, wow. We don't know if you're going to get presents or gifts this year. Maybe you will, maybe you'll get a card. We don't do cards, do we? No. We're not. We're not very romantic like that. But uh, no. <laughs> I got him a Nintendo one year. Do you remember that? Uh, PlayStation, yeah, oh, PlayStation 2 good. it was, yeah. That's yeah. when we had money before we had kids. That was the peak, <laughs> that was when we peaked. <laughs> that was the best year. Um, so we just want you to know that we are here and uh, whatever you're doing today, uh, we're glad that you've joined us at Kingsway Online. So we've got a really great lineup for you today. We're going to be going into a time of worship in just a few minutes. And then after that, we've got some information, particularly for our young people. So if you are a teenager, if you're at secondary school, we've got some really important information for you about Youth Alpha. And after that, we're going to be handing over to Mark, who has got a great message for us today about choices. So stay with us. Join in with the chat if you're on YouTube. And I'm going to hand over now. Prepare your hearts and get ready to worship God. We are grateful for all he has done. Thanks, over to you, James. Morning, everyone. I thought we'd introduce a new one this morning. It's called This I Believe. And the words are actually based heavily on the Apostles' Creed. And I just find it so fascinating how such ancient words can be still kind of very relevant to us to this day. And it's also quite handy because I feel like a lot of us will be familiar with the words. So I invite you to join me this morning. If you want to stand, that's fine. If you want to raise your hands, that's fine. But let's just worship our God together.
Robert. Okay, you rolling? Okay, we're gonna scare Jason with this spider. Come on, we're gonna get him back. Watch it! Guys, this is a film set, you got it. Oh. Tons of things happen in our lives every day. And in a 24 hour period, we ask ourselves so many different questions. Like, what should I eat? What should I wear? Or who should I hang out with? Sometimes we ask bigger questions like, what do I want to be when I grow up? Who will I marry? Or where will I live? But every once in a while, we ask ourselves those even bigger questions. Questions like, why am I here? What's my purpose? And is there more to life than this? The reality is, there aren't a lot of places we can go to explore life's biggest questions. So on Alpha, we want to create a space where we can talk about those kind of questions in a way that's open and honest. In each one of our hearts, it's like we have a happiness bucket that we're constantly trying to fill. It can sound like this. If I just had uh, more money or nicer clothes or a new girlfriend, then I'd be happy. The nights would come and the girls would be gone. Like, it'd be just me, you know, me and I guess God, right? And I'm like, okay, there's definitely more to life than this. Like, I just want, I want, I want, I want, and you don't get anything. There's this deeper, even spiritual hunger that we're all trying to satisfy. As someone who grew up in an atheistic home, I wasn't just gonna accept what he was gonna say. So I was like, okay, did this actually happen historically? What's the evidence? I'm not gonna just buy into something because I get swept up in the emotion of it. You have approximately 570,000 hours left to live. And we want to invite you to spend less than 24 of them with us on Alpha. Hello everybody. I'd like to just say a few words about church membership. Uh, when we're allowed to meet together, um, we have probably over 200 adults and children who meet regularly to worship at the Kingsway Church. But out of that 200 or so, we only have 114 members who have fully committed themselves to the work at Kingsway. And membership is really important. In our membership handbook, it says in there, church membership is a way of identifying ourselves with the local body of believers. It's a statement that as a Christian, we are in agreement with a local church and we are willing to be identified and to be a representative of it. And we'd love that you would if you're not already, would commit yourself to become a member alongside us. So why, why do that? Well, we're a family with Jesus at the head, with God as our Father, and the Holy Spirit engaging with each one of us as we allow. And we all have beliefs as clearly demonstrated to us and communicated to us by God through his word, the Bible, so important to us. And it is important that we commit ourselves to those beliefs. And if we want to, this family at the King's Way. And that is why we have a structured membership to give order and understanding and commitment to not only what we do, but why we do it, what we believe in. Now, if you're not a member of Kingsway Church, but would like to just know more, or you might want to actually become a member of us, then why not take a look at our membership booklet? It's a small booklet that clearly lays out the reasons why and, and how we actually become a member. Just take a look at that. Read it and find out more. It will be a real blessing to have all of you fully on board with this family here at the Kingsway Church. The easiest way of getting hold of one of these booklets, I can email it to you. So 
I should think all of you have an email from me most weeks. Um, just just mail me, ask me for a booklet, and I can send you an electronic copy. Or you could ring the church mobile um, and just request one from from Stuart, and we'll post one out to you quite happily. I said we're God's family, and we want to be one. We want to be committed together as one under his headship. Thank you. Today is Valentine's Day, but I'm not going to talk about that at all. So if you're expecting anything romantic, you should leave now, which isn't a quote from my marriage, by the way. What I'm going to start with, though, is a famous quote from A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens, written in 1859. Some of you will know this very well. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. It's a very famous quote from a long time ago, but it still feels relevant today. It contrasts opposites in what the people were going through in two different places at that time. We had best and worst, wisdom, foolishness, belief, incredulity, light, darkness, spring and winter, everything and nothing. Some people have had a good time during lockdown. Others have been pushed to their limits. I've seen people behaving with great wisdom, others with great foolishness. Some people believe in the vaccine, others are sceptical. Some people have made huge amounts of money. Others have lost everything. Babies have been born, but huge numbers of people have died, including people in our own church family. If you were to ask 10 people or simply look on social media, you will see such a range of views about our current situation, a situation that we're all sharing, and you will see ever more polarised and increasingly extreme views on every aspect of society. It's my view that opinions and everything are becoming more extreme and more polarised, more black and white. I'm right and you're wrong. Again, that's not a quote from my marriage. The problem is, as well as making us a more intolerant and fragmented people, it affects our views of God. As Christians, the question of who is Jesus, is key to our daily faith and living our lives. The last time I spoke, I talked about this in depth, but I want to look at a different aspect today and something that has been and is very relevant for us recently as a family. What is God's will for me? What is his plan for my life? Do I turn left or do I turn right? Do I take the blue pill or the red pill? The problem is, as with the quote from Dickens, we tend to think in opposites, in binary choices, in two dimensions. I don't think that God works like that. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 is one of the most famous passages of scripture that we use to encourage people in tough times. It's one of my favourites. It says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. It's a great scripture. It helps us through tough times and gives us promises for the future. However, I think that many times we may have taken this out of context. So I'm going to challenge that view today that we may have had of this scripture, but then show you what it means for us. And what that is, is even better than we might have originally thought. The background to the story is this. The nation of Israel have moved into the promised land. This land had previously been inhabited by pagan nations who didn't know God. God's intention was that his chosen people 
will be a light in this darkness and permeate that culture with obedience and righteousness. However, Israel failed in this mission and succumbed to the practices of the pagan nations that surrounded them. But because he loved them so much, God sent prophets over many years to warn Israel, but they ignored the prophets. God then punished his people by allowing a foreign nation named Babylon to invade and the Israelites were sent into captivity. Jeremiah is one of these prophets sent to speak to the people who were now extremely depressed, had been defeated and had lost all hope. During this time, there was much turmoil and emotional and physical stress amongst the believers. To add to this, there was also a false prophet named Hananiah who gave false hope to the Jews regarding the prophecies of God. According to Hananiah, the false prophet, God promised to relieve the Jews of their suffering after two years and then they would go back to their home. This was a false prophecy that Jeremiah heard and had to rebuke. Chapter 20, verse 15 says this. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah the prophet died. I would imagine that this made the people sit up and listen to Jeremiah. It's fairly cut and dried, isn't it? He wasn't exactly hedging his bets with that one. But then imagine Jeremiah having to tell the Jews that instead of two years in captivity, they would live in Babylon for 70 years and have to endure it, as it says in Jeremiah 29 verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners amongst you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. The people of God were asking for an immediate rescue from the suffering that they were experiencing. And Jeremiah had this huge responsibility to tell them the truth about God's promise. He was telling them to build houses, to plant gardens for food, to marry, have children, have grandchildren, and to help make Babylon prosperous through practical means as well as through prayer. How strange. Surely God doesn't work like that. Surely he wants me to be happy right now because that's what I want. I've heard it preached many times that when we ask God for something, he answers in one of three ways. Yes, no, or not yet. In my view, this story is a big not yet, and it was tough to hear. Some of the older generation would never see their homes or their old way of life again. The famous verse that we've already quoted was Jeremiah's message, inspired by God's guidance, to tell the people that God's response was not an immediate answer, but rather that God had a plan to prosper his people in the middle of hardships, and that God had a promise for the future of his people. This is amazing if we think about it. We started off by saying that we often think in binary terms, yes or no, black or white, right or wrong. The Israelites in this story were thinking Babylon equals bad and home equals good. But God says, no, I plan in different ways. I think in different ways. I have a plan, but it isn't what you're expecting. You will stay here for 70 years, but 
I will still prosper you, still bless you, but in ways that you hadn't dreamed of. So what does this verse actually hold for us today? Let me show you a couple of things that jumped out at me while I was reading the story. Number one, in the middle of adversity, God said to pray for the place that they found themselves in and for the people in charge. God says, if they prosper, you prosper. It's simple economics. Today, in the midst of our national and global crisis, we should pray for our leaders. Don't pray against them. Don't pray that they fail. Pray that our nation and the world will prosper. Secondly, the Israelites were instructed to put down roots, to get used to it for a while, to start a family, basically to start new life, make new plans. Is God telling us the same thing now? Many of us, including me, long to go back to the way things were before we'd ever heard of COVID. We want to go back to 2019. But what if that isn't going to happen? I don't mean that the awful death toll will continue or that we'll be in lockdown for years to come. I don't mean that at all. What I do mean is perhaps the nation and the world that we will find ourselves in will be a very different one to the one that we had before. New procedures, new rules, new challenges. We'll have to find new ways of making the economy work, of feeding people, of doing church differently. We'll have to find new ways of living as a follower of Christ. People are longing for hope, for purpose. They're longing for answers that we have ready for them. Perhaps God is saying to us, put down roots, start new spiritual families, pray for those in charge. It's tough for us to hear, just as it was tough for the Israelites. But this is the good part. God says very clearly that he has a plan and he knows what it is. He's not making it up as he goes along. He then gives more detail. If we do the things that he has just laid out to pray for those in charge, to settle down to our families, then part of his plan is to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us hope, to give us a future. God isn't yes or no, black or white. He doesn't have to take us out of the situation to fix everything. He blesses us in the middle of adversity. Is it easy? Not at all. Let me make this personal for a minute. We've had a tricky time in our household these past few months. We've been struggling for direction. We've been struggling to know God's will, whether to go left or right. We've prayed, sought wise counsel, read scripture. The way things have worked out has been, in many ways, baffling. God, you want us to be happy, not stressed, not confused. So why are you answering our prayers in the way that we have set out for you to do? Why don't you just lift us out of this situation and put us over there where we think that we should be? I read a book a while ago that talks about the way that God works and the author painted a picture that I found really helpful. It describes a straight line drawn on the ground. This line represent, represents issues that face us as people or church issues or political issues maybe. For example, if the question was about your views on politics, you might have left wing or right wing written at either end of your straight line. It might be a question over same sex partnerships in the church and you would have right or wrong at either end of the line. For any issue, you put yourself somewhere on that line. So, for example, the question of Brexit. I might have the choice between whether I was a Leaver or Remainer. So I would put myself somewhere on that line. This is what I think. One choice, second choice. Now, this is fine to a point. But the problem is that we try and work out where God sits on that line. What? his views are on these issues. We find scripture to back up our views and then fall out with others with different views, even though they have just as many scriptures backing up what they say. So where does God sit on these lines, on these kinds of issues? Is he sat next to me? Does he think something different? I would suggest that he doesn't sit anywhere on this line drawn on the ground. 
He works up here in a completely different dimension, using a thought process that is not our thought process, using wisdom that we can never fathom. Are you baffled by the way some parts of your life have turned out? This might be why. Israel thought captivity was bad and therefore wrong, and going home was good and therefore right. Opposite ends of the line. God didn't work in those two dimensional ways. In our family situation, this has been particularly relevant. God has not moved in the way that we thought or asked for or expected him to. The answers and outcomes have been completely unexpected and the process is not yet over. He has moved us through situations that have been extremely difficult, painful and stressful. Has he spared us from this painful journey? No, he hasn't. It would have been easy to look at scriptures like the one today and become really confused or convinced that we've just got it wrong or that we are not in God's perfect will because we're going through a really tough time. God, you're not prospering us. I don't feel as though there's a future. So therefore, we've stepped off the path. We're wrong. We've missed, we've messed it up. But no, God does not work in that two dimensional way that we so often do. We wonder if we should have turned left or right. But he says, no, there is another way that is in a completely different dimension. He isn't interested in just delivering us, just rescuing us from a bad situation. He's teaching us through these times, dealing with issues that may have been buried for years, making us more like him. The refiner's fire that we talk about, it burns away all of the impurities, but it's not going to be a pain-free process. I know of many people who've gone through some really tough times in their lives, not just recently through the pandemic, but going back years or decades. Sometimes, with time and distance from a problem, you can see the journey that you've been on, see the things that you've been taught through it, see God's guiding hand. But even so, there are some events that are still simply baffling. Why did that happen? What did I do wrong? Why did I end up on this path? When did I step out of God's plan? Why am I not in God's perfect will? I think that many of us understand what this feels like. I also think that perhaps we know that if we deliberately and knowingly and repeatedly go against God's teachings, then yes, we are probably not on the right path. But equally, there are many who are just simply baffled by the journey. Where did I go wrong? Instead of second guessing, meditate on the fact that you still may be within the 70 years of captivity that Jeremiah told the Israelites about. Even though it's baffling, painful and seemingly never ending, God wants to bless you through it, prosper you through it, teach you through it and reassure you that you have not missed it or blown it or lost it. He loves you in ways that we cannot even yet imagine. You haven't missed it. He has a plan and you're in it. So to return to the quote from Dickens at the start, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. I've learned that it often isn't a choice between one or the other. It can be both at the same time. Things feel bad, but God is working for good in it. He uses my foolishness to demonstrate his wisdom. He works with my unbelief to create belief. He makes me the light in the darkness. We have nothing and yet he gives us everything. To finish today, there's an old worship song that has got me through some tough times. It says this, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide, hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day, he will make a way. Yeah.
I'm going to ask Deb just to finish uh, by praying for us all. Thanks for that. We just want to pray. Lord God, we thank you for relationships. We thank you for the blessing of fellowship with each other. And we just hand over to you anyone today who's feeling sad or alone. We just pray that they would know that they are loved, that they are part of a church family who want to support them at this time. And for those, Lord, who are married... And in relationships, Lord, we do just pray a blessing upon them today. I just pray in this time of lockdown, when people are spending a lot of time together, that you would give us the patience to love each other each day. You'd give us the strength to walk each day together. And I just pray that you would give us a peace in our hearts during this time, that we would know that we are with you and that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. It's been great to be with you and we hope that you will connect with us again next Sunday. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with us. Otherwise, we'll hopefully see you all soon. Have a great week, everyone. God bless. Bye.